In today's video, we are going to dive into an exciting development topic for all you Roblox developers out there. We will be discussing about a networking module called BridgeNet2, a powerful networking library designed specifically for Roblox games with a strong focus on networking performance. So, what exactly is BridgeNet2? Well, it's a networking library that aims to optimize the way data is transmitted between the client and the server in Roblox. One of its standout features is its ability to reduce header data from remote event calls via moving 7 bytes. Now, you might be wondering, why is this significant? Well, cutting down on header data means fewer packets are sent per Layer, resulting in decreased server bandwidth. And the best part is, you can utilize this saved bandwidth to send even more data, allowing for richer and more immersive gameplay experiences. Let's go over the benchmarks. To give you a clearer picture of the performance gains, in a test scenario with 200 blank remote TV calls per frame, Roblox's default remote event alone performs at 114.89 kilobytes and BridgeNet on the other hand 26.60 kilobytes per second. That's an impressive improvement. Finally, if you found found any bugs, have any questions or any errors, just go to the BridgeNet2 thread in the Roblox OSS Discord or in the GitHub repository or you can just reply this post and the creator will potentially respond to you. This is the version 1.0.0, the latest one. Let's click on the RBXF file and download it. Now drag and drop inside the studio now let's put it in the replicated storage so in order to use the module first let's create a script let's create a local script now in the local script we're gonna require the module bridge local bridge net to equal to require game dot replicated storage dot bridge net to Let's create a bridge, local bridge equal to bridge net two dot client bridge and we will call this bridge itself. You can name it any you want. You can even call it a reference reference bridge. But personally I like to keep it as client to bridge because it's more readable and understandable. So let's create a on server event. So in the client we must call the bridge variable, call the fire method and that's it. And let's go to the script. Let's require the module. Let's just copy and paste it here server bridge we must call it server bridge not the client bridge or else it was gonna add a bridge connect function here is going to be the player parameter print player we are gonna print the player Let's test the game. See, it, it printed the player name. We can go inside the script also. And yeah. Let's create the on client event. We are going to change this to connect function. Got one minute. Print fired from client. 
and we are gonna call the bridge variable and gonna call the fire method and here's the important part bridge net we have to call bridge net two dot as you can see there are there is players all players and players accept from players if you if you choose this option you can set an array of players you want you want to give them data so in order to use this we must put it in an array and we're gonna call game dot players dot shadow block depth you don't have to write my username here you have to write your username so that it in order to in order to make it work basically let's wait for 10 seconds so that we could wait for the player to go let's wait few seconds see it fired is I use the accept accept method players accept let's play as you can see it didn't print anything so let's go through for about identify they are basically the it basically transfers parameters efficiently between client and server let's create an identifier local identifier just fire equal res dot reference identifier there and let's call it identify copy this and paste it here after that you must create a table and create a bracket put this variable inside and put an equal to sign let's make this organized so it's going to look like this much much better perfect let's uh, add a string for fire we can call it fired and we will we will uh, name this argument as it's in a array so and here's the important part you must print the array wait for a few seconds oh wait we are using the players accept method let's use the all players and remove this see you can see a table look this is the this is the symbol what we need copy it and copy it and create a bracket create a string and paste it in here Let's play the game again. Oh, yeah, it fired. That's it. That's for arrays. I know that's a bit annoying to add that. It's a little unnecessary though, in my opinion. But this module is very good. I use it personally in my game, Operation Assault. And if you like the video, please make sure to subscribe and click the bell notification. And I'll see you in the next video.